Welcome everyone. Today's story is called Walking in the City with Jane, a story of Jane Jacobs, written by Susan Hughes and illustrated by Valerie Boyden. Jane sighed. When will the lunch bell ring, she wondered. It was uncomfortable holding her book under her desk and sneaking peeks when Miss Courtright wasn't looking. Jane wished she could be out on her bike instead, or learning something interesting. Nothing was worse than being bored. Suddenly, Jane's eyes opened wide. Now this was interesting. Miss Courtright was demonstrating something called a toothbrush. Jane had never seen one of these before. None of the children had. You must all promise to brush your teeth every day for the rest of your lives, her teacher ordered. Jane knew a promise was a serious thing. She also knew she couldn't be certain that she'd brush her teeth every single day for the rest of her life. So Jane refused to promise. Not only that, she encouraged her classmates to do the same. An angry Miss Courtright sent her home. But Jane didn't really mind. She learned the most when she was out and about. She enjoyed looking closely at things she saw around her. Sometimes she tested herself by explaining things to her imaginary friends, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and Surtick. How does that work, Surtick might ask, pointing to a car or a traffic light. What is it for? He was from medieval times, so Jane had to explain almost everything to him. After finishing high school, Jane went to live with her older sister, Betty, in New York City. Her sister worked there as a sales girl in the department store. Jane loved her hometown, but this city was huge and exciting. Day after day, Jane looked for work, but she also enjoyed getting off the subway at different stops and exploring whatever neighborhood she found. While she explored, Jane liked finding patterns and making connections. Look at those metal waffles, she told Betty one day, pointing to the manhole covers on the streets. Betty had never noticed before. They did look like waffles. Jane had also discovered that letters and numbers on the manhole covers explained what ran underground. Gas, water, steam, electricity, and even sewage. The city takes water in and sends its waste out, she told her sister. Ooh, Betty plugged her nose and giggled. Jane rolled her eyes. On another day, Jane discovered something else about how cities worked. She knew that animals, plants, rivers, sunshine, and rain all work together as part of a healthy ecosystem. But a city is also an ecosystem, she realized. It is made of different parts. Sidewalks, parks, stores, neighborhoods, city hall, and people, of course. When they all work together, the city is healthy. Now this was interesting. Large cities that work well might look messy, but they're really not, Jane told her friend Bob Jacobs. He was an architect. They were walking along a street looking for a good place to eat. Healthy cities need a mix of buildings that are used for different activities and filled with different types of people, explained Jane. Healthy cities are places where people can live and work safely and happily. I see, said Bob, staring at Jane. And look, Jane stopped in front of a perfect little restaurant one she had never seen before. Short city blocks give people more opportunities to turn corners, more chances to meet up with others, more possibilities for surprises like this one. And that makes people happy too. It would make me happy if you would marry me, said Bob. After Jane and Bob were married, Jane continued to work as a journalist. She and Bob were also busy raising their three children, Jimmy, Ned, and Virgin. The Jacobs family lived above a candy shop. They loved the activity that swirled around their lively neighborhood. All these people out and about, Jane would say to her children, all in the same space and all doing different things, chatting, shopping, working, relaxing. It's like a sidewalk ballet, isn't it? Jane thought of cities as places for communities of people. However, many experts thought cities were mainly for big businesses and that new was always better than old. These city planners labeled several older buildings in New York slums that were unfit for people to live in. They decided to bulldoze them and build block after block of identical high-rise buildings in their place. 
Upset, Jane wrote an article criticizing the plan. She had visited new developments like these in other cities. They had looked so empty and unfriendly. And then one day, Jane learned that a powerful city planner named Robert Moses had labeled her neighborhood a slum. He wanted to tear down part of it to build a highway. The four lanes of highway would also replace a small road through the local park. Why? So traffic could get downtown more easily? Jane couldn't stand by and let this happen. She and her family joined their neighbors at rallies and in writing letters of protest. On the day that Robert Moses spoke about his plans at city meeting, he glared at Jane and other protesters. There is nobody against this, he complained to the city officials. Nobody, 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 but a bunch of, a bunch of mothers. Robert Moses didn't seem to care what the community thought. Jane and the others refused to give up. They even convinced the city to temporarily close the park to traffic. This gave Jane an idea. People had ribbon cutting ceremonies to celebrate the opening of new places. Why not celebrating closing the park to traffic with a special ribbon tying ceremony? So they did. Jane's three-year-old daughter, Burgeon, and a friend tied a ribbon across the marble arch at the park entrance. The park is closed to traffic, they cheered. Eventually, the city officials agreed to cancel the plan for the highway and keep the park closed to the traffic for good. But according to Robert Moses, cities were created by and for traffic. Two years later, he came up with another plan for a highway, eight lanes running right through the center of the city. Believing cities were created by and for people, Jane led a fight against the highway. After several months, the community protests won out and the expressway was canceled. Another two years went by and the expressway was proposed again. This time, it got the go ahead. Once more, Jane sprang into action. She organized rallies and protests. One day, she and several other activists interrupted a city meeting about the plan. The police were called and Jane was arrested. Jane was soon freed, but by then she was a local hero and her arrest had caused a big stir. New Yorkers were outraged that officials would go to such extremes to defend their plan. This became a turning point and the city canceled the expressway. Jane and the other nobodies had made a difference once again. A few months later, Jane and her family moved to Toronto, Canada, another big city. She soon felt right at home exploring the streets of her new city. And almost immediately, she found herself speaking out, this time against an expressway designed to cut through her new neighborhood. Once again, Jane's voice helped win the day and the construction was halted. Throughout her lifetime and beyond, Jane Jacobs urged city planners to make cities better for people living in them. She inspired communities to take a stand for their neighborhoods. She also encouraged everyone living in cities to look around them while they walked and to listen, linger, and think about what they saw. After all, they just might discover something interesting. There's a note by the author at the end. Walking in the City with Jane is a fictionalized account of the life of the influential writer and urban thinker Jane Jacobs. The story and the illustrations in the book are based on actual events and photographs. Jane was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania in 1916 and moved to New York City in 1934. Years later, in 1968, she and her family moved to Toronto, Canada. Although Jane did not receive a college degree, she took many college courses on topics that interested her. All her life, she asked questions, made observations, and shared her ideas. She worked as a journalist and wrote many books, including the world famous, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. In it, she explained her views about cities being urban ecosystems, what made them work, and what could make them great. Today, people, both children and adults, continue to follow her example of adventuring out into the city streets, to look up at the power lines and peer down at the manhole covers, to sit on the park benches and pop into train stations, to appreciate and be part of a sidewalk ballet, 
to learn about their cities firsthand the way she did. Jane Jacobs became a Canadian citizen in 1974. She died in 2006 at the age of 89. To honor Jane, some of her friends and colleagues started a series of free walks led by local citizens who share facts and stories about their communities and help bring them to life for others. Now held in many cities across the world, the tours inspire people to connect with their neighbors and their cities. You can find out more by visiting www.janeswalk.org or www.janejacobswalk.org. Enjoy exploring your city or your town. Thanks for joining us for our story today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.